R-E-E-R. And for today, I am in charge. At an extra buck an hour, I can feel my mood turn sour as we clean up vomit and culture discharge with two vacations and a couple sick calls and the on-call pool running dry. With administrative moans, they've cut staffing to the bones and we're so burnt out, it makes us want to cry. Okay, everybody, listen up. We have a code red disaster called. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Nobody is going home at the end of this shift. Mandatory doubles. We have a 10 car pile up and the traumas are en route here. We've called in everyone we can and we're still short staffed. Administration says, do the best you can, which is never good enough. Okay, come on, everyone, let's just get ready. Hey, look, I am sorry about the doubles. Evening shift's been called in early, so with a little luck, we should be okay. Hi, Dave. I just got the call. Oh, What's up? Eve, thank God you're here. We've had two sick calls for evenings. I've got the whole day shift staying, and I've got a traveling nurse coming in. Oh, great. What agency? Have nurse. We'll travel. Oh, no. Those nurses know their stuff, but they're more burnt out than we are. I know, I know. But as administration put it, do, do the, the best, best you, you can. can. Okay, what's the story on the disaster? Multiple traumas, number of victims unknown, multiple vehicles involved. Apparently, a van carrying a barbershop quartet was hit by a bus full of lawyers. A hazardous materials crew is cleaning up the lawyers. This is gonna be a fun evening. Several cars were involved in a subsequent pileup. Fortunately, an ambulance was far wasn't far behind. First time I ever heard of an ambulance chasing lawyers. Well, the worst of the victims should be arriving any minute. I wonder how they got a bunch of lawyers on a bus in the first place. I think they were going to a seminar entitled Being a Weasel for Fun and Profit. The first ambulance is backing up to the bay. Everyone get ready. It's showtime. Oh, this looks really bad. Oh, no. We are four fellows just hit by a greyhound. An ambulance has brought us here. We will sing away your frets. We're a barbershop quartet. And our harmony is pleasing to your ear. Sweet Buddy's got something caught in his throat. Oh, well, let's see. Open up. I can't see anything. Can you speak? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Oh, can you breathe? Yes, I, I think so. Yeah. OK, we've got a partial foreign body airway obstruction here. And it really hurts when I swallow. So, so don't, don't swallow. Sweet Adeline. Attending to every cut and scrape and bruise And I try to stay alert as I do the paperwork I've got good insurance in case I get sued Whether a splinter or a burst, appendix or an interior MI When I'm spit on and uncursed, I depend upon the nurse To make sure that I do not get it in the eye Jenny, get him to x-ray 
Hey, wait a minute. He's not going anywhere without us. Why not? Because we've got group insurance. Oh. Okay. Mary, make sure you get the x-ray requisition punched into the computer. You know how they are down there. And please be sure to get all their lab work entered, especially the blood alcohol levels. Oh, and don't forget to get their insurance ID and notify their families that they're here. I, I know how to do my job. Hey, do you think we can get out of here by 8? I've got a date tonight. You've got a date every night. I don't know what time you're going to be out. Well, don't take out all your stress on me. Administrator, I watch the budget and cut cost. And if it were up to me, they would do the work of three. But the Joint Commission credit would be lost. I keep an eye on staff and all their hours. Review the census, count the beans. If we don't get reimbursed, I lay off another nurse and replace her with a couple UAPs. <laughs> okay, who is in charge here? Oh, I, I am. am. I, I mean, mean he she is. is. I, I mean, mean, we are. Well, whatever. Have all the patients been entered into our billing system? I don't want any free care given out here. If they don't have insurance, transfer them to City General. They're state-funded and have to take the indigent. <laughs> Mr. Slimy, do I need to remind you that we have a moral obligation to serve those in need? Moral schmorals. Remember the bottom line, people. When are you nurses going to learn that caring and compassion don't pay? No income, no jobs. Yes. Well, remember, these patients are lawyers. When are you going to learn? No care, lots of lawsuits. I didn't think of that. <laughs> Make sure they get everything they need. <laughs> Sweet Adeline. Get them out of here. Jenny, put the quartet in the psych room and get a consult. Sweet Adeline. If you guys don't keep quiet, we'll put the lawyers in with you. We mop the floor and then we clean the hopper. We scrub the sink and wipe the shelves. To cat scan with a woman or a man, we run over anyone who's in our way. In the profession so chaotic, it's strange that we are not psychotic. And though we border on neurotic, it's the care we give that helps us persevere. So traveling nurse gonna get here? Oh, boy, you said it. We're really in the weeds. Who are they sending? Nancy Pierce. God, not her.
What are you talking about? I went to nursing school with Nancy Pierce. She was top of the class, a great nurse and lots of fun. You haven't worked with her in a while. She's burned out, doesn't care anymore. Only in it for the money. Well, at least she's got a license. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thumb screws for everyone! Oh, no, you! Oh, no, it's Gomer Gominski. Gee, I haven't seen him all week, oh. and I was beginning to worry. I wonder what it is this time. Chest pain? Kidney stones? Bad breath? <laughs> No matter what, he always manages to find his way here. Usually just the social admission. Poor old guy probably just needs a couple of good meals and a healthy dose of quell. <laughs> well, we'd better hide him from Mr. Slimy. He's got no insurance. Let's put him in the psych room. Twice a week we can see you walking through the door. Hey, Gomer, don't be on the floor. Your name is Gomer. You're kind of gnarly and true is dripping from your chin. Poor Gomer, you never can win. How you shuffle and walk with an unsteady gait Is it a stoner? Is it something you ate? You are a loner Ain't got a friend in this whole wide world You lonesome man, no friend or foe -er. Except for the crabs
records get delivered by a rider truck. Poor Gomer. So down on your luck. We met just a few years ago. You were a handsome guy. And seeing you this way leads us to say, Before the grace of God go I. So Gomer, go get offended if we smile at all your chronic states. Dear Gomer, you're really first rate. cast room. Let's see, Diane's covering cubes, Mark and Leslie are in with trauma protocol, and phase one through six are being admitted. That leaves the psych room uncovered. And with the crowd that's in there, that may be a problem. Well, who can we free up to go in and at least get vitals? Hi, I'm Nancy from Have Nurse Will Travel. <laughs> well, who's in charge? I am. I mean, he is. I mean, we are. Where have you been? In a time warp or something? I'm sorry, there was a lot of cross-town traffic. Something about a bus full of lawyers. How did we get a bunch of lawyers on a bus anyway? We need you to cover the psych room. Oh, psych isn't one of my strongest suits, but I guess I can handle it. But what I hear you saying is that psych isn't your strong suit, but you guess you can handle it. Why, yes, that's what I just said. But what I hear you saying is that that is what you just said. That's correct. Who's in there? A gomer and a barbershop quartet. The gomer, well, he's an old friend of ours. He hasn't been assessed yet. And he was scratching quite a bit, so I would wear gloves and roll down your sleeves. Oh, great. I hate well, and I can't stand barbershop quartet music. What I hear you saying is hey. that you... Maybe you should take the psych room. Never mind. Where's the paperwork? Right here. And you better take the dark keys. Hey, hey, who's got the keys? I've got the keys. Hey! You're not paid oh, to stand yeah. around doing the macadamia and the dance! You! Are you a nurse here or what? A what? Well, uh, shouldn't you be, uh, scraping out someone's bedpan or, uh, sticking a needle in someone or, uh, Whatever it is you nurses do. Jeez, who's that? What's his problem? Oh, that's the hospital administrator. He's so tight, his butt squeaks when he walks. <laughs> Noisy bottom line. Well, listen, the psych room is back there. Let's not keep Gomer waiting. Somewhere out in the left field. Poor old guy. He's got the worst luck in the city. Hey, Doc, would you please take a look at this guy? Okay, uh, raise your right arm. Fine. Raise your left leg. Fine. Send him to MRI stat. Oh, great. Transport's on a break. There's nobody to take him. Nancy, you do it. But I've had to do everything. Just do it. Oh. Oh. I've had it. I've had it. I've had it up to here. I can't take any more of this. My hope has disappeared. I've had it. I've had it. I'm giving up my beat. The things I used to stand for have knocked me off my feet. I used to laugh. Pressure has my humor on the run. There was a time I really cared. Each patient meant a lot. But there's no place for feeling now. Compassion's gone to pot. She's had it. She's had it. She's had it up to here. She can't take any more of this. Her hope has disappeared. She's had it. She's had it. She's giving up. She's beat. The thing she used to stand for has knocked her off her feet. 
searching for. Collaborate, I'm too burned out for teamwork anymore. Don't talk to me about my strength. They've taken it from me. I've lost the power to chart my course. I am no longer free. Your relief can't make it in. You'll have to work a triple shift. She's had it. 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 See you? What would you know? You're just a brainless old bum. <laughs>
seriously, but you should take yourself lightly. <laughs> Humor is one of the key principles to not only being a nurse, but being able to stay a nurse as well. What's in my pocket? Where did I get this key from? It's one of the five keys you need. Humor? Mr. Kaminsky, you come out with the craziest things. <laughs> but you seem to have a sixth sense of what this is all about. So tell me why we're here. <laughs> why aren't there any patients in the burn unit? Fire hasn't been discovered yet. Minus. 
spoken jest. It is the key. Find the key. Oh, uh, uh, find the key. Uh. Oh, great. I just can't leave him here. He might sue me. <sighs> Mr. Kaminsky, wake up. Come on, wake up. Bet if I waved a bottle cork underneath your nose, you'd wake up. Come on, Mr. Kaminsky. Why do I always get these assignments? Well, I think I like him better this way anyway. Oh, Mr. Kaminsky, wake up. We have to get out of here. Where are we, anyway? Quickly, brothers! Secure his limbs, so that no injury may befall this poor, unfortunate soul. Verily, forsooth, tis a great idea. Transpiring here, forsooth is blackguard. What times are these that a high-positioned cardinal can enter a ward without one flourish of a trumpet or one knee bending to kiss his rings? Oh, please, oh gracious one! It is a very busy day, and we are trying to stabilize this this poor fellow. Be fit with fit. Oh. Did you not receive it, my memo? Were you, were you not at the staff meeting? This, this is exactly the kind of breakdown of discipline we are trying to eliminate. But sire, but sire, our first duty is to serve and comfort the sick. Uh. He's not sick, it's just an alteration in wellness. He's just not living up to his wellness potential. <laughs> It's true that your first duty is to serve, but it is to serve me. <laughs> what seems to be the, the problem with this peasant? He broke into fits verily before our eyes. And why was he not immediately restrained? Well, well Your Holiness, 
We have found that patients prone to fits do much better when protected from self-harm. Restraints tend to hurt their arms and their legs. Precisely. <laughs> but you are slightly mistaken, for the injury is caused to the demon within. This man is obviously possessed by evil spirits with which we must do battle with. Set up for procedure. I'm going to give him... Burles. <laughs> Burles. Burles. <laughs> and then, then we'll try a little... A little bloodletting, yeah! I love bloodletting, it's so bloody. <laughs> and then, 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 we'll try stinging his nipples with hornets. <laughs> if all this fails to drive out the demon, then, then maybe a little hot poker action will convince the devil to vacate his body. He would not have been possessed if he were not a warlock. A heretic, or even worse, someone with no insurance. We beg of you, your grace. Please let us minister to this poor fellow as we see fit, according to the tenets of our holy order. Please don't continue to treat this man with such a barbaric prescription. Perhaps he is a test sent by God to assess our capacity for compassion. Uh, when will you nursing orders learn caring and compassion don't pay? We receive funding to fight the devil and diseases of the devil. What's a little suffering when you're saving a soul? Not to mention my generous monthly stipend. A simple rule of life. All of your concern will make you daft after a fashion. Your soul will fill with tension and with strife. You need to be more cognizant of your greater mission. And listen to this ditty I will sing. Or you won't even have a chamber pot with which to piss in. You'll be sorry that you did not kiss my ring. When I was a lad, I pulled the wings and legs off flying, crawling, creeping things. I stuffed them in a jar, all sealed up tight. Experimented on them all the day and night. He experimented on them all the day and night. And so sadistic at age eight, I knew that I was destined to administrate. And so sadistic at age eight, he knew that he was destined to administrate. Boy, oh, he sure reminds me of someone. As I grew up through my teens, I shared the company of dukes and queens. They thought me cute and rightly so. Shooting at the dog as he ran to and fro. Shooting with his arrow and his crusty bow. I hit him once and it felt so great. I knew I had a future as a potentate. He hit him once and it felt so great. He knew he had a future as a potentate. Gosh, is this guy ever sadistic? He'd make a great proctologist. And at the age of 22, I summered at the shore with Cardinal Richelieu. He taught me well the ways of court. Keep revenue tall and keep expenses short. Keep revenue tall and keep expenses short. And with my duty crystal clear, I applied for a position with a managed care. And with his duty crystal clear, he applied for a position with a managed care. And as I rose up through the ranks, I stepped on Visigoths and Celts and Franks. And no remorse have I to show. For now I am a very wealthy CEO. Now he is a very wealthy CEO. And I care not for thine or thee, unless it will increase the current treasury. And he cares not for thine or thee, unless it will increase the current treasury. Boy, this guy's something. He 
either he's way ahead of his time or he's causing this crazy time warp dream too. So heed my words, ye monks and nuns, until this battle with disease is won. I'll squeeze the surf of every pence. Do I see a disapproving countenance? Yes, you see a disapproving countenance. Well, fie on you and fiddle dee dee. May you all be stricken sick with all your piety. Fie, fie on us and fiddle dee dee. We serve the glory of our own divinity. Brother Harpo, you mentioned compassion, and he goes off on such a tirade, he forgets all about the burr holes and the bloodletting. We saved another from his evil clutches. But, but how long can it go on like this? Sooner or later, somebody is going to be seriously hurt. It is hard to treat with compassion when there are so many forces acting upon our ability to give care. <laughs> oh, great. As if it didn't smell bad enough in here with the goat urine and the rotting flesh, you have to make your contribution. Oh, have you ever heard of sphincter control? Have you ever heard of bowel training? Or just plain courtesy, maybe? Oh. Find what is lost. Find the lost. You had it once, and now it's gone. Find the key. Find the key? What are you talking about, Mr. Kaminsky? Do you mean the Narkees? Can you help us get out of here? Do you know something about all this, Mr. Kaminsky? Now, why should I help you? I'm just a smelly old geezer with bad breath and bugs. You ain't done nothing but insult me since I met you. You call what you do care. The truth is, you don't care. <laughs> you blockhead! <laughs> Chester the Jester. Oh, they really beating on uh, bad this time. Probably oh. another ugly joke about the king's daughter. Oh, Nelly! Did anyone get the number of that caravan that hit me? Ooh! What a buzz. And all without a potion. Ooh. Chester, what has happened? Merely happened to state in front of the entire court that Princess Euglena is so ugly. How ugly is she? That she has to sneak up on a chalice just to get a glass of water. <laughs> you know, some people just can't take a joke. Or the truth. Well, Chester, we know that you were good intentioned. But that was a bit rude. Well, let us cleanse your wounds. We will bring aromatic salves and medicinal roots to ease your pain and give you comfort. Oh, yes. I really love those medicinal roots. <laughs> hey, have you got any mushrooms? <laughs> there. See that? Those people really care. Oh. Maybe you cared once, but there's no more care left in you. <laughs> You're empty. It's too late. You're stuck here. Stuck? What are you talking about? I can't be stuck. You're crazy. <laughs> Some of us with broken hearts Looking for a brand new start Some of us with pain and woe Some without a seed to sow 
Still your arms, they open wide and draw us safely deep inside. You offer us your love just while we're here. In such a time of barbary, the more we hurt, the more we see the truth about your loving intercessions. With unconditional regard for peasant, thief, or castle guard, you minister your healing interventions. Some of us with broken dreams disillusioned by the things we've seen. Some of us with broken bones, you heal us and give us a home. Because of all the things you do, we're living now with hope renewed. You offer us your love just while we're here. Just while we're here, until the wounded wing does mend. We look for help. And in your eyes, we also found a friend. So thank you all most graciously for your concern and empathy, for making desperate times a little brighter. The kind of love described in verse, you see it only in a nurse. And when you give your loads a little lighter You the ever-giving ones Constantly forgiving ones Empowered by your sanctity You serve even your enemy No matter what the circumstance You're glad to enter in the dance and offer up your love just while we're here. You offer us your love just while we're here. We're grateful for your love just while we're here. Patients used to tell me how good I made them feel. I used to get notes and flowers and chocolates. Oh, how I miss chocolate. What if it's been invented? Where did I lose it? Mr. Gaminsky, I'm sorry I treated you so rotten. I couldn't cope with the stress. You see, I lost my sense of humor. I couldn't see that it was me standing in the way of the care that you deserved and not the system. I lost my compassion for others. But I can change, regress, whatever. Mr. Kaminsky, I'm sorry. <clears throat> compassion! I got it back! I got my compassion back! not medicine that cures. As a nurse, your first duty is to assist nature. But how do I learn what nature requires? Always trust your experience. It is better than any theory you read in a book. Oh my, that's Florence Nightingale. We must be on the Crimea battlefield. Is that anything like Crimea River? Oh. I'll try a river over you. <laughs> Strive to be a good observer. All superstition can be based on bad observations. If you cannot get the habit of observation one way or the other, you might as well give up being a nurse. For example, what do you observe to be the problem with this patient? Oh, it's so dark, I can't even see anything. Precisely. 
This patient needs more light and more fresh air. The air within must be as pure as the air without. Well, that certainly disqualifies you, Gomer. What in blazes is going on here, Nurse Nightingale? I'll thank you to not disturb the peaceful slumber of my patients. If they do not get fresh air and light, their slumber will indeed be an internal one. How dare you question my judgment and authority? What gives you the right? The best interest of my patients gives me the right. And I will always act when I can see a better way. Nice. As it is, sir, you have built this infirmary over a cesspool. I must protest. Your insubordination, Miss Nightingale. And I must protest your failure in personal hygiene. When was the last time you washed your hands? I thought as much. Kindly remove yourself from this patient's presence until you have removed that filth from your person. You haven't heard the last of this, Miss Nightingale. You have overstepped your bounds once too often. Get, get, get out of my way. Wow, she wasn't afraid to speak up at all. Now that's taking the lead. That was so courageous. But aren't you afraid he'll have you dismissed? Then who will take care of these patients? You must never forget that you are the best advocate for your patient. And if you do your work with simplicity and singleness of heart, you need not be afraid to speak out. To do less would be to accept the intolerable. Patience and resignation are just other words for carelessness and indifference. Never fail to speak and act boldly when you can see a better way. You owe it to your patients. Though they're only passing through to their care, you must be true, and you should never and your cause is right, you need only speak the truth and you will prevail. But if you try that and they still won't listen to you... <laughs> Like a mango. Ta 
then bind them with a logic that's pure and complete. Nightingale Tango. Make your teeth sharp as fangs. Oh, it's the dance of empowerment. Just watch the. Beat them and whip them 
Bless them, entrap them. You need to become more involved. <laughs> Torture them more, and their worlds around you will revolve. Let's get signal. She, you know she's right, Mr. Gaminsky. I do have a vision for the future, and I should act boldly to lead others to it. I guess I lost sight of that for a while. Hey, another key! Visionary leadership! That's three! Hey, but why don't you help me turn this patient? It'll only take a second. I've got to do his back. Renee, I just sat down to do my charting. Can't you page the orderly? He, I already did. He said it'll take 15 minutes to some Gomer gone to circ in the ER. Yeehaw! Right in Gomer. Must be Grandpa. <laughs> Look, why don't you see if Miss I'm worth more than you are can pull her nose out of that theory book to see if she can give you a hand. Feeling just a little bitter because BSNs are getting an extra buck an hour? If you'd spend more time working and less time whining, you wouldn't have any energy for bitterness. Hey, look, my associate degree is worth just as much as anyone's BSN. We do the same work, we should make the same money. You know, when I was in my diploma program, we were happy to get paid at all. Thanks for that help. Charity, would you please help me with my patient? Oh, gee, Renee, I'd like to. But if I don't find a theoretical base of practice to serve as a cornerstone of my uh, care plan, I'll never get it written by 3 o'clock. <laughs> Let's see. I have alterations in sleep patterns relating to feelings of guilt as evidenced by insomnia. Oh, I can't say insomnia. That's a medical diagnosis. How about inability to enter REM state? Oh, yes. I like that. Inability oh, to enter Never him. mind, never mind. The orderly's here. He can help me. Hey, Carla. Oh, I'm sorry I was late, Renee, but that was one wild gomer. <laughs> Yeehaw! Go get him, brother. Don't spit until you see the whites of their eyes. I appreciate you coming, Carlos. Oh, rats! There goes that newfangled monitor again. Another example of modern inconvenience. Last time this happened, it took me an hour to get this thing shut off. Hey, keep it down over there. My patients are trying to sleep. And so are my clients. Let's see, last time I think all I had to do was push this button. Ooh. Oh, that made it worse. Oh, I can't even hear myself think. Yes, I'm experiencing ineffective individual coping related to excessive auditory stimuli as evidenced by tinnitus. Oh, I can't say tinnitus. That's a medical diagnosis. Never oh, mind what it's evidenced by. Will you please come over here and help me? Oh, all right. But the first thing I think we have to do is establish a theoretical problem-solving paradigm, thereby proving that theory is relevant in practice. Then, after we've identified our outcomes and reviewed our resources, we can make an intelligent, logical decision about how to proceed. You know, by the time you finished your pre-assessment, this monitor is going to be obsolete. Last time, all I had to do was play with it just a little bit. You know, nothing teaches like experience. Hey, look, <clears throat> you play, you plan, I'm going to go check the instruction manual. Well, you'd think if they would just work together, they'd be able to figure it out. Hit the silence alarm button, you jerks! That noise is driving me crazy! Wait! It says here, according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we have to fulfill the base of the pyramid first, and then move up the top to be wholly self-actualized. I guess that would mean getting rid of the pain in our ears before trying to concentrate on understanding that machine. Can you silence that thing somehow? Then when it's quiet, we'll be able to engage in higher reasoning. 
You know, that is a great idea. You see, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. But where is the silencer? Hey, you know, the manual says it's that big orange button on the left. This right? one? Yeah, that one. Hooray! We did it! <laughs> oh, I'm right. so happy. <laughs> Don't get too excited. It says right here in the instruction manual it's only going to work for 60 seconds. Then only three times, because it's a safety feature. Hey, I'm in the alarm parameter set mode. It says here all the systems are set within the given parameters. There's no reason for the alarm to go off. I'll check the manual. Oh, I'll check the care plan. I'll check the patient. <laughs> I think I figured out which parameter is set wrong. <laughs> well, at least there's nothing wrong with the patient. Now, um, where is the reset button? I'll check the manual. Well, I can check the research. I'll check the monitor. Hey, you know what? It says here in this researched abstract from this Journal of Techno Nurse that some of these newer model monitors are equipped with an alarm key to reset alarm parameters. Another safety feature, it says. Hmm. Oh, why don't you try looking up alarm key in the glossary? That's the back of the book where you turn and you look. I know what a glossary is. Don't be so anal retentive. <sighs> oh, I can't say that. That's a psychiatric diagnosis. <laughs> How about uh, just full of shit? <laughs> I like that. Full of shit. <laughs> Cut it out. I think I can feel a place back here where you could put a key. You know, the manual said that, that the alarm keys were on the narc ring. Who, who's got the keys? Not me. I don't have them. No, I certainly don't. Check again. You know, I, I, uh, I thought this was my dream catcher in my spirit stone and my aromatic walk bio and my pen light, but it's like... Sorry. All right, here we go. Alarm parameters reset, all systems functional. Well, hallelujah. Whoopee. Oh, whoop de do. You see, it took all three of you working together to find the answer to the problem. You know, he's right. We did solve it together. You see, to us, the people who work with you and, and help you, there are only two letters after your name that matter. RN. You all pass the same exam during those letters. Everything else is extra. If you don't have RN after your name, you don't have the most important tool of all. And what might that be? Las Llaves! Las Llaves? The, the keys. keys! Oh, the keys! You know, I noticed before when we were all looking for the keys, you started laughing. That's because any time a nurse yells out, who's got the keys? You do a little dance. <laughs> I remember doing a dance. Perhaps I had an altered sensory input episode, as evidenced by amnesia. That's amnesia. That's a medical diagnosis. Well, how about a blackout? Oh, you don't even realize you do it. You know how there's a, a medical uh, diagnosis for a, a universal sign for choking like this? Ooh. Or uh, a universal sign for uh, chest pain like this? Ooh. Or a universal sign for code brown like this? <laughs> well, you nurses have a universal sign for when you're missing the keys. We do. <laughs> it's just this little thing you do anytime anyone yells, who's got the keys? Well, well maybe you can enlighten us to this uh, fascinating and oblivious behavior of ours. I'm always willing to experience growth. And awareness is the first step in that process. Yeah, 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 whatever she said. Okay, first I need a cue. Who's got the keys? Who's got the keys? Who's got the keys? Can you tell me, please? Who's got the keys? Who's got the keys? Who's got the keys? Can you find them, please? I do that. You all do. It's contagious. Every day as we work with you, we coordinators and aides. 
just one thing that we cannot do, the key to easing the pain. Be it morphine or damn or raw, Valium, Verset or Perks, who administers one and all, the patient knows it's his nurse. We can transport, we lift and boost, we help you turn and align. But we admit that you rule the roost when their pain scales rating a nine. So when your patients say, help me please, and start to cry boo-hoo, someone calls out, who's got the key? And here's the dance that you do. K-E-Y-S, do you have the keys? Won't you double check once again and see? K-E-Y-S, never lose the keys. You're responsible for the keys you need. La Chiapis is a dance to ease the pain. La Chiapis is a dance to do. La Chiapis in your pocket or on a chain. La Chiapis, it is up to you. Who's got the keys? Who's got the keys? Who's got the keys? Can you tell me, please? Are they deep in your pocket, on the top, or on the bottom, around your neck, like a locket? Can you tell me who is not? Are they dangling from your wrist, like a fringe on a skirt, or pinned to your waist? I need a bit of hurry. Whether A, D, or B, S, N, a diploma, or a degree, does it matter when in the end you are holding the key? The letters trailing behind your name, I do not mean to poo poo. But an RN is all the same to a schedule two. For alterations in comfort and anxiety related to pain. For individual coping, a little bat of band goes a long way. Find the mark out, do the count, codeine dilaudid cocaine. But make sure it's the right amount or hide from the DEA. Who's got the keys? Who's got the keys? Who's got the keys? Can you tell me, please? Are they deep in your pocket? On the top or on the bottom? Around your neck like a locket? Can you tell me who has got it? Are they dangling from your wrist like a fringe on a scurry? Or pinned to your waist? I need them in a hurry! Hey, Mr. Gaminski, you're a pretty good dancer. Huh? You're pretty light on the nursemaid. Please! <laughs> call me Gomer. Okay, Gomer, and you can call me Nancy. I prefer nursey, but Nancy will do. Now let's see what we need to learn to get out of here. We? Are we working as a team now? Well, you saw how bad things were going until people started working together. Each of us has a unique and valuable perspective to offer. And working together as a team, we can accomplish our goals. There you have it. You've got the key. Teamwork. Not knowing why, finding courage in place. 
Goodness. I wonder when we are now. You have to look behind to leap forward. I don't know why I even bother to ask you these questions. Even if you do know what you're talking about, I can't make any sense of it. <laughs> oh, and I thought I was a traveling nurse. Would ask where in the world we are, but I don't think we're in the world at all. At least not my world, from the looks of things. I've heard a word of problems on the planet's surface between the nurses and the insurgent HMO. The planetary administrative nurse has requested our help. The healthcare system is in chaos. The nurses are either fighting amongst themselves or just giving up. What I hear you saying is, there is a problem with the nurses. Yes, that's right. They're in quite a tizzy down on that planet. What I hear you saying is they're in quite a tizzy down on the planet. That's what I just said. The nurses are so busy being patient care advocates, they didn't realize that their profession was being taken over by bureaucrats to run health care delivery for profit. Maybe I was a little too hasty. This sure sounds like my world. It looks like the same problems nurses are having in the past just followed us into the future. They lost what you find. How bad is it on this planet? Well, apparently there's a particularly nasty mutant HMO infiltrating the healthcare delivery system. The nurses are just now starting to form a revolution and a nice little magazine on the side. They're just, they're in the beginning stages of reclaiming some control over their own professional practice. Is it as bad as it was back on Earth? Well, let's hope not. Thank goodness that problem was fixed centuries ago. Locate the planetary administrative nurse and have her transported here to the bridge. Aye, aye, Captain. Located and transporting now. Commander, there seems to be a problem. There were several alien life forms overwhelming the planetary administrator when I began beaming aboard. I may have several of them beaming aboard as well. I have been cut off. Where's that droid? Even though I am master of the force, I still need my albuterol. I knew we should have never pulled you off the electric light parade. <laughs> Mr. Vader, you must go back and finish your breathing treatment. Maybe you should try that again. Thanks for coming. 
HMO and PPO. Managed care is a way to go. Managed care is a way to go. HMO and PPO. HMO and PPO. Managed care is a way to go. Managed care is a way to go. Stop right there, sirs. You see what I have to deal with? It's because of them we've been downsized so far. I have to run the planet and take a patient assignment. <laughs> downsizing so much, we've downsized the one body between us. I think we got carried away a little bit on that one. Shut up. You say downsizing, you're playing our song. Downsize that to cut the cost. Downsize that to cut the cost. Don't complain or you'll get tossed. Don't complain or you'll get tossed. This thing has overpowered the whole healthcare profession here. Cost containment's where it's at. Cost containment's where it's at. Excuse me, but I smell a rat. Huh? How did you do that? I've huh? never seen them shook up like that before. It's relatively easy. They're so busy watching the bottom line, they don't see what's happening right in front of them. We will strive to guard your health. We will strive to guard your health. Long as we collect the wealth. Long as we collect the wealth. When there's talk of managed care. When there's talk of managed care. We must make sure the nurse is there. We must make sure the nurse is there. Huh? <laughs> wow, you huh? did it again. You stopped them in their tracks. Could you teach me how to do that? It's really very simple. The only thing you need is to see the need, step in and take control. It's called empowerment. Empowerment? I don't have any power. They have all the power. That may be the way it is now, but they didn't always have all the power. Besides, <laughs> who do you think gave the power to them? Well, they just took it. And you can just take it back. Well, I thought nurses had to get their power from someone else. Now that you mention it, who is that someone else? Nurses sometimes get so caught up in being polite that they start asking permission for things that they should just take control of. It's a throwback to the old paternalistic medical model. Power is another matter. Just look at your profession's level of education. Look at the overall impact you have on patient outcomes. Look at your sheer numbers. Did you ever consider that without nursing care, medical care would be impossible? You know, I never thought of it like that before. You mean nurses have power all their own? Absolutely. They have the personal power of their own convictions, and that comes from within themselves, to have a vision and a personal direction. And they have a collective power as well when they work together as a team. Oh, well, that sounds a little scary when you mention it like that. But it's a choice you make, both personally and professionally. You can choose to be run by the healthcare system, or you can choose to help run it. You know, you're right. The problem is, is we nurses have been letting someone else tell us how to do our job and then complaining about it. This nursing administration is going to take a stand. Nurses have power. Besides, we outnumber those fortune hands. Give me that. Please. Do you know how to play this? No. Good. And we are a power to be contended with. And when you're looking for inspiration, think about the nurses throughout the history who have fought this battle. Florence Nightingale, Clara Barton, Laura Gasparis, and don't forget the one who embodied empowerment, Nancy Pierce. Because of them, nurses throughout the galaxy learned that they can make a healthcare system it's based on the important things. Like, like patients and health care instead of sick care and profit. I think she's got it, boss. Uh, Commander. Okay, you, you two. Uh, you five. We've got some serious changes to make around here, and this time nurses are going to have something to say about it. Nurses have power. Thank you for coming, Commander. I'll remember everything you told me. Good luck. And we'll be back if you need us. Why did you have to tell her that? Do you know how far we had to go to find a planet that didn't know about that damn Nancy Pierce? Ooh, they'd find out about her somehow. Oh, that last radiation field was terrible. Now where do we go? I want my pitch pipes back. <laughs> that can't be right. Me? They can't mean me. Could it be if nurses realize the power of empowerment, they can change the past? 
Nope. The future? Whatever. I'm so confused. No, I'm not confused. If nurses empower themselves, they can change healthcare. Empowerment. May the farts be with you. And also with you. Did you say something? <laughs> Where did you get that? You know, I'm going back. What I'm do you mean hungry. you're going back? I'm do you know hungry. How, do you know how to get back? So do you. You've got the keys. You really are just a nutcase. Or is it possible? Do I know how to get back? Maybe it's these keys. Well, I found my sense of humor again, and the importance of compassion. Warren showed me you can change things with visionary leadership. I saw how teamwork was essential to nurses accomplishing their goal, and now I understand about empowerment from within. That's it, isn't it, Mr. Gaminsky? Mr. Gaminsky, where did you go? your head. They are only the NARC keys. No, it's more than that. The most wonderful thing has happened to me. These keys have given me new life. I lost them and then I got them back in the strangest way. It was like a dream. You all should have been there. Mr. 
Minsky, thank you! Thank you! What is going on here? You are not paying to stand around and chat! And you, what will the patients think if you don't look busy? Image is a very important part of marketing our services to the public. Get working, get working. You're paid to treat me ill. I don't need any loaf about me money in the till. Stockholders are more important than the sickly or the ill. This job is just about the cash. Just take this bitter pill. I'll cut the staff to make a buck. Dump anyone in my way. This hospital will make me rich. I'll be rolling in the hay. Get working, get working. This message so inspiring. The patient's cured and out the door, or you I will be firing. And you were there, too. Believe it or not, I learned compassion from this guy. I was reminded what the lack of compassion looks like. Mr. Slimy, we are not going to take this anymore. We come to work every day to care for people that need our healing touch. Well, I've got a thing or two to show you. We've had it, we've had it. When will you see the light? Your bottom line is blinding you to what is wrong and right. Our patients are just dollar signs in your greedy little mind. They came here for compassion from these healers of mankind. They come to us, the sick, the ill of every class and race. We do our best to heal their hearts with compassion and with grace. We've had it, we've had it, we're going to set you straight. This so-called managed care you sell, we won't equivocate. We've it's had it. it! I know just the cure for Mr. Slimy's bills. Are you taking me? Stop! I demand you to stop! Here we go again! You know? Ah! I love this job! <laughs> I do have the keys to the future of healthcare! We all hold the keys! <laughs> she's got them, she's got them, she's going to be all right. The keys have been recovered and the future's looking bright. She's got them, she's got them, she's going to be okay. There's hope alive within her heart, she sees a better day. We've got him, we've got him, the kids come from within. Like Nancy, we can look inside and find a way to win. We've got them, we've got them, we're going to be okay. And hope is stirring in our hearts to see a better day. We've got it, we've got it, we're going to be alright. The keys will not be lost again, we'll keep 